Not exactly the way you want to start a week, is it? By the time our alarm clocks went off this morning, stocks were already falling around the world after China's currency fell to its lowest level against the dollar in more than a decade. Most European markets were down 2%. Hong Kong was down 3%. And then it was time for Wall Street to get to work, and it wasn't pretty. When you have names like Apple down 5%, Boeing down 2.5%, you know you're going to be in for a rough time. And that's exactly what happened today. Here are the final numbers with the Dow down 767 points, just about 3%. It had been down nearly 1,000 at one time. The Nasdaq was hit the hardest off 278, about 3.5%. And the S&P dropped by 87. It was the worst day of the year for all three major indexes. Now, numbers like this can be concerning for investors, especially when it's driven by complex things like currencies. And tonight, we're going to try to put everything in perspective on what this all means for you and your money. And we start with two reports. Yunus Yun will tell us what happened in China overnight. But first, Bob Pisani kicks things off with a recap of Wall Street's bad day. The markets were in turmoil today. The Dow plunging more than 900 points at its low as trade tensions bubble over, but closed well off of that. The sell-off was broad-based. Everything except gold and utility stocks tumbled really 2 to 4 percent. Techs, banks, consumer discretionary, energy, industrials all closed sharply in the red. Even consumer staples, which is usually a safe haven play, didn't fare well today. Walmart, Costco, even Kroger, they get 100% of their revenues in the U.S., was under pressure. This tells you that some investors simply taking down exposure to the overall market. It makes sense given how pricey stocks are and the risks. Right now, the markets in August are looking an awful like they did in early May. We saw trade talks break down then. The U.S. hiked tariffs on Chinese goods and China retaliated. In fact, the VIX, the market's widely watched fear gauge, is back above 20. That's where it was in early May. Bulls say we're one tweet away from a rally, maybe, but the problem is the positions are much firmer than three months ago. The bottom line, this is not May. Now we have currency issues and possibly other retaliatory measures outside the tariffs and could get even more serious. This could escalate. That's the worry. Market charters are also watching technical damage. The small cap Russell 2000 and the Dow Transports dipping below key technical levels. It's also worth noting that the Dow Jones Industrial Average has now given up about half of its gains for all of 2019. It had been up just 17% last month. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Bob Bassani at the New York Stock Exchange. yuan has weakened past the psychologically important seven mark or cracked seven as currency traders here say raising questions as to whether or not beijing policymakers are purposely devaluing the currency as a way to offset the potential impact of president trump's next round of tariffs Today, in a statement on its website, the People's Bank of China didn't mention the U.S. by name, but explicitly linked the depreciation to the trade war, saying the losses today were largely due to unilateralism, trade protectionism, and tariffs on Chinese goods. For the past decade, the authorities here have kept the yuan above the seven level. The government here heavily controls the value of the renminbi, but today, Beijing sent the signal that it would tolerate a weaker yuan. That's being received well by manufacturers since the weaker yuan helps make Chinese exports cheaper. But it could anger the White House, which could see the move as Beijing weaponizing the currency or giving up on the trade talks set for the U.S. in September. And there's another risk for Beijing with this move. Capital flight. The hashtag RMB crack seven is a top trending topic on social media here with 410 million views so far. And generally people are expressing their doubt that the authorities will be able to keep the value of the currency and what they see as their money safe. For Nightly Business Reports, I'm Eunice Yoon in Beijing. By the way, we should point out that the Chinese central bank denied purposely devaluing its currency in response to the latest U.S. tariffs. Instead, it blamed those market forces that Yunus itemized. And one more development. A report in China's state media said that Chinese firms have suspended purchasing all U.S. agricultural products and that the country has not yet ruled out imposing tariffs on the ag products that it purchased in just the past few days.